some deep mayonnaise thrown in there somewhere. Ugh. Ugh. That was really nice. Yeah, it's fun. In some way, Duke's mayonnaise needs to be in there. You get you some of that rainbow crab mayonnaise now. I thought he was jumping. He just didn't feel weak. Did you see that rainbow? The mayonnaise? That was a legit. You picked your own and I don't think it was. I don't know if it was legit. Crab come out with a rainbow. You saw that too? No, I was going to ask you. There was a picture of. Uh, I don't like. I, I'm way up. I don't know if it was legit. You're talking about like. Does it don't say mayo on it? It don't even say mayo. What does it say? It could be a mayo. That's what it said. I picture that. But like, I have somebody that knows what they're doing. I mean, it looks. The one that's going to be going out, right? I don't believe anything I see on the. How many jars did you buy? But yeah. Send me pre-order to you. Jump again. What is sixty-three of them? You on the same party bus, Steve? Hit the ground. Yep. <laughs> That's the part of the world. Are you talking on the plane? I probably would. Y'all are crazy. <laughs> well, they lost my video, so I get to do it again for free. But we go in Chattanooga, and there's what? like two chutes, yep, and then an automated chute. Once you get to a certain altitude, no, if it right. hasn't deployed, either one of them. What? Why must you push your luck? <laughs> Because it's fun. <laughs> Here's an old one. I can think of a lot better ways to push my luck than fun. <laughs> What's the uh, hardest part of skydiving? Getting out of the ground. It's the ground, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, that's really old. No, no, I had a good guess on my part. Mm -hmm. Never heard it. <laughs> anyway. All right. We actually have a lot more people here than I was thinking this morning. I didn't know. Uh, as soon as everybody hears the hunters on the way here, nobody shows up. Mm -hmm. you know? That's what you said too. Where's oh, Mark at? Yeah, you guys are on the video, so don't, don't be talking. Everybody's on vacation. A lot of Mark's on vacation. Yep. Yeah, that's what I said. Where, where was he? Out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dwight and Ryan. Mm -hmm. Did they go to the table? Put that table right there in the middle. We may do that next week. I just don't want to block anybody. Normally, the queen, she was sitting right there in the middle. Well, as long as. As long as we got hope from about right there up, we won't block nobody. Yeah, as long as I'm on the other side of it, we're good. <laughs> All right, we'll look next time. Uh, <laughs> I don't care. I was kind of to the conclusion that if somebody's not making fun of me, nobody likes them. That's right. I, I, I don't disagree. That's the way. The more comfortable you are with somebody, then you start making fun of them. That's true. Yeah. What's that? That's what the Scots keep telling me around here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the right officer. If I pick on you, it's because I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't like you don't like anybody. <laughs> you don't like anybody. You don't like anybody. You're pretending that you do like them. You're getting away with those jabs. And then you know? Scott Hall was at the ball game, and I'm like, oh, well, that's three Scots, and they're all a lot alike as far as picking on <laughs> There's people. too many Scots in this world, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. That's right. Makes it interesting. I don't know if I can hold all that. We all know her name is Scott. I don't like it. <laughs> it's too late now. I know. <laughs> he is destined for great things. <laughs> you better start working on him now, again. <laughs> Sounds like we're not going in that direction. He's destined for his IQ to talk about about the city. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. I'm just going to blame it on his head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it. Keep worrying about All right, moving on. Here we go. I'm going to make you one more time. Let's see. 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 Let's this morning, if uh, you have your scripture journal, we're going to be on page 82. No, that's not right. 84. Yeah, it's 82. Yeah. It's 84? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> 84. Are you, you're it's a new commandment. A new commandment. Oh, wait, yeah. We're on 84. 84. Yeah. 84. Sorry, okay. You got some figured out. It's 84. Uh, but if you're following along in your, in your Bible, it is chapter 13, verse 31. The ESV gives the header of a new commandment. Um, a couple quick announcements before we get started. One is uh, we're going to have Lake Winnie Family Day, uh, Saturday, July 23rd. 
So if you are interested in that, um, either let, I don't know, just let somebody know. Uh, Tara, uh, Debbie, uh, whoever. Um, and we're gonna get a head count, ride down, uh, ride up together. You know, everybody, you, you ride up to Jerusalem, you ride up to Fort Oglethorpe, same type of thing, you know? All right, so. Yeah. No, we're trying to get a lot of people, and maybe we could do like a catered lunch or. Yeah, they have like a pavilion and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And yeah. Maybe we, if we have enough, we'll get one of those. When is this? July 23rd. I mean, I don't really know if we're all going to ride together. We don't have to all ride together. I think I might be okay. Okay. I think we're going to get them. Is it wrapped in or anything like that? Or? There is a splash the section. Is that count? So sure. The water park no. actually makes Lake Winnie not so bad. There's no rafting. Uh, the, uh, the the creek that connects Lake Winnie is the Black Branch, and it is there's no there's no rapids there. It's very uh, it's like three inches deep. So. Isn't it like a baby yeah. Viking island? <laughs> yes. Yeah, but now there's a water well, you know, park. That's 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 water park. Let's just call it the country. Yeah. The water park. The country. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just call it that, you know. That's what redneck six play. That's probably that's, that's probably more true. Oh, boy. I'm not gonna disagree. Oh, boy. I mean, it's kind of expensive, honestly. I mean, compared to what you it used to be, like uh, it was like seventy five cents to get in and four dollars you could unlimited rides, and now it's like or that shows how old I am, I guess. Seventy five cents. Seventy five cents to get in. That's what it used to be. Yeah. Start calling you Paul. Everybody guess how old Wesley is. Yeah. <laughs> That's 1990 uh, prices or something. 1989. Our sandwich is enough, Paul, though. Moving on. <laughs> you don't want to go to Lake Winnie and just, you know, calm down. You don't play for jumping out of the plane on those rides to Lake Winnie. <laughs> <laughs> There's the one swinging thing that goes around that thing. I, I don't think I've ever been to Oh, that works. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so that's our next upcoming event. That's our first announcement. Our second announcement is we are having our second annual, it's not really annual because we didn't go last year, but we're going to have a community outreach over at Nichols um, Road. We're going to clean up from, from 411 to, uh, to Chulio. That's going to be Saturday, Saturday, July 30th at 8.30. Um, we, we did it, um, I think, two years ago, and it's, uh, it, it's just... I don't know why, but for me, it is like the the trashiest. Like that, people just throw stuff. At. It's crazy. Cause I guess, is there. yeah, because no, that's right. You can't see it from my house, so <laughs> I'm gonna leave this over here. You know, but like, uh, it, it accumulates a lot of trash. And uh, the last time we did it, Clyde, man, he was like, he's a he goes at it. So as long as Clyde's there, it's easy for everybody else. But um, no, so we're, that is uh, July 30th. Keep that in mind. And then it's the week after uh, Lake Wayne. So, uh, any comments or? So, are you going to be lunch at this? <laughs> no, I'm hoping to be done at like uh, 10 or 10 30 or something. No, no lunch. Well, you could have a little grill up here, too. You could have breakfast or something. Mm -hmm. A little grill? Man, that's going to make it like a whole event. Well, you know, we just going to go pick up some trash. Roast a weenie, dude. Roast a weenie. It's 10.30. Who wants hot dogs? I thought I'd be in Florida then. Jump suit for that. I'm going to go with hope. But we, we may have some stab sticks. I can come up with some stabbing sticks. He's going to have to because he cried about that for like two weeks. I got, one, I got one of those little grabber things. It's a lot of bending over. You need a getter. Yeah, a getter. Yeah, that's what I got one of them. That's called a nifty yeah. nabber. That's what you call it. It's a getter. A getter. Okay. I, I took Perry. He was my getter, but it still wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call it. There's a lot. I mean, there's a lot more. You, you think well, it's a trap to do it, be like, they used oh, there's to buy them, but there's a lot more. That's a plant know. out there all the time, and that's what they were, nifty neighbors. You know the little tall things that you go with? Huh? Those are my getters. I get my stuff down with me. Yeah. I need one of those. Well, I have back surgery. Yeah, Hope's good with that place, huh? She tied your shoe with that unit. <laughs> I probably could. <laughs> <laughs> The little grabber things when I have back surgery, that was a lifesaver because you never realize how many things you drop. So you have back surgery, oh. you can't bend over. I, above my, there's a little spice rack above my stove, and that's where all my spices are. <laughs> I keep Rachel, I have to use the little tongs that I cook with. <laughs> we all know if you drop stuff, Scott would have got it for you. No. No, I'll stay in the clear, bro. Go look at home, home. He was just working. Medicine had a little help. Don't you have to go to work? <laughs> 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 All right, well, getting started. You got no one to get the clear. <laughs> Is it safe for me to come back now? No. 
Uh, all right, previously in John, uh, today one thing, I, I, I like the idea that today is the 40th um, Bible study in the book of John. I feel like that's quite a, that's quite a lot, you know? Um, I don't know. We're, uh, we're over halfway. We're in the second half of the book, so we'll see how many more we have. But, uh, but this section, the section that we're in now we've talked about, is named by scholars uh, the Book of Glory. Um, whereas the first half is the Book of Signs, we're in the Book of Glory. Uh, also called the Book of Passion, which is, which is a good one, too. Um, talked about John, the one whom Jesus loved. Uh, the KJV calls him the beloved disciple. Uh, he has shown us Jesus as the Son of God, uh, the Christ Messiah, and the further revelation of God himself. In uh, 858, it says, Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Uh, and bo John boldly testifies that Jesus is God. Uh, he uses very straight, you know, clear, straightforward language uh, to explain that Jesus is God. And he also poetically calls him the Word. He says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John writes his gospel and includes a precise statement of purpose. Um, now, Jesus did many other things in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. John wrote his gospel with an evangelistic focus. He's often called John the Evangelist. Um, and uh, he, he preaches the gospel to us as we read it. Um, so that we learn, and then we preach the gospel to others. Um, that's the true witness of John the disciple. Uh, in 21 24, it says, This is the disciple who is bearing witness about these things, and who has written these things, and we know that his testimony is true. In the first half of the gospel, we followed the crowd who followed Jesus. With the resurrection of Lazarus, there was a decision made by the chief priests and the Pharisees uh, to kill Jesus. With the, movement move, with the movement moving towards the cross, the crowd rejected Jesus and his signs. Now Jesus is, is preparing his disciples for his departure. Last week he gave them this appeal to live as servants. He gave them an example. He lowered himself at the Passover meal. He, he gets up and humbly takes off his outer garments and washes their feet. He fulfills Isaiah 53 as the, as the servant. That's, that's who he is. He is the suffering servant. He shows himself as that. Uh, in 13.7 it said, What I am, I'm doing, you do not understand now, but you will, uh, but afterward you will understand. And he goes on to say that this common, uh, the common experience of, of natural life has its counterpoint in spiritual existence. The person who has taken a bath, who is basically clean, may need to have their uh, feet washed after a short walk, even on the city streets, even though that bath would be pretty much unnecessary. In the same way, the disciples have received their cleansing salvation. He then says, by faith, you are clean. But not all of you are clean. John lets us know that Jesus was fully aware that Judas Iscariot was going to be the one to betray him. Uh, Jesus starts the Passover meal by dipping the morsel in the sop and handing it to Judas. When he has made the, uh, who is, he has made the guest of honor at this meal, loving him to the end. Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father. The light would soon be leaving him. Jesus said, I have come into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. And he also said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light. He's leaning against Judas's chest. Uh, Jesus says to him, What you're going to do, do quickly. Judas immediately went out, and it was night. So we'll, have, we'll start off with a prayer, and uh, we'll, we'll get into the Word. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for uh, giving us our opportunity this morning to open your Word and, and for you to further reveal yourself to us. We ask that you challenge us and change us this morning. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. So we'll start right there in 31, and we'll read. Uh, well, can we like, ask a question about that? Oh yeah. What about Satan entering into him? Like what? Like, is there any? What's going on with that? Yeah. Or are you going to talk about it later or no? No, no, we can talk about it now. <laughs> you just want to know what's up with that? Yeah. Um. You want to know like physically how that happened, or you want to know oh, like? No, I know. No. I don't um, mean physically. Um. It, it is. It is. A, I don't want to call it a possession type of thing. You know, like a demonic possession to some degree, but. 
Well, I mean, that's what I was thinking. That's, that's kind of what you're saying? Yeah. Like, is he, is he like in a trance at that point? And he's like, hello. No, well, no he's not like that. Like, I don't know. I just um, didn't know if we studied on that. Well, I mean, you know, um, he, by his own decisions and his own um, choices, gets himself to the point where he has enabled himself to be taken over by Satan, let's just say. So, I mean, there is a string of events that he does to get him to that point, you know? Um, uh, you know, now, does, does so Satan... possessions typically are kind of allowed mm -hmm. once you've gotten yourself to I that point? I am going to say that. I am going to say that. You can you can try Job. Uh, he, you know, he, he's a righteous man. Go, go try all you want. It doesn't work, you know? Um, I, I do think that it does have to do with our own position and our own choices, our own... Um, we get ourselves to that point. That's that's what I think. Um, so Mary Magdalene got herself to that point? Yes. That's good. Maybe good she question. Didn't. She didn't want him out. Maybe she didn't realize it. Who? Yeah, but Mary Magdalene. Oh, we haven't got to her in this, but you're, you're right though. Yeah, she has seven uh, seven demons inside of her at one point. Um, then how? Then how come after Jesus got them out? How how did that make her like whole? If she had already kind of allowed herself to be bad, and him taking them out, I mean, I still think she would kind of be bad, right? I don't know. Once you get the demons out, you're good. Well, then that means that the demons are responsible for all your bad decisions. No, 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 I didn't say that. Well, no, but I that's said, kind of can be implied. Her decisions okay. enabled her to get to the point of being at that point, you know? I think you make yourself vulnerable. I mean, like, to me, Judas was, well, he was rebellious anyway. He was kind of a antagonist, mm -hmm. so to speak. And because things wouldn't go his way, I think the... Not, not, not hatred probably be a not a good I, word, I but I mean the the anger and the frustration of not getting his way made him vulnerable to being taken over by evil. So could after Jesus died, could he like the devil have left, and that's why he had guilt, and that's why he killed himself? I don't know. That's a complex question. Yeah, I've had an I've always, you know, I've wondered about the did Judas actually kill himself. But I could also say at the same time that if, let's say you put yourself in Judas's shoes, mm -hmm. and that's you acting these, these parts out. Mm -hmm. And I think after being with Jesus so long and that close and seeing it, and even at the end, like you said, he was the guest of honor. Mm -hmm. I mean, could I do that with somebody that's fixing betrayment? betray me? No. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that shows the love and, and forgiveness of, of Jesus. So, I think he probably did feel bad yeah. when he I, realized what he had done. I, d I don't, maybe I used to, but I did used to fall into the, I don't want to call it a trap, but it is this, you're making Judas innocent, and you always want to try to find excuses for him. I don't know if it's because you... No, I don't feel like it's not I'm not, I'm not just saying just you, no, I'm, I'm just saying it's a common thing to do. Well, did Judas just that. majorly backslide? Did he just... Well, we, consider, you we're know. going to talk about it a little bit, but we know that even before Satan entered, no, right, he was, he was already, an investor. He was already yeah. taking the money out for his own right, things. Yeah, yeah. He was already making bad decisions. Um, so he was not innocent. To say that he's innocent is you're well, really... Anyone saying he's innocent. Okay. I, but you can say that you did, you had guilt. Although you aren't innocent, you can have guilt for something and still be guilty and then have the guilt of feeling bad. You can, you can have guilt for something and then not... Um, I mean, we've all done things in our lives that we look back and we kind of regret. Right. And so there's there's that regret. It's a savings regret. Um, Judas, oh, heaven or hell? Ooh. <clears throat> You're not supposed to say that. He's in hell. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, we debate that a lot. Yeah, that's a good debate we have. Yeah. Why? Well, that's what I said. I, I don't think that. Because he, he did not. Uh, he didn't repent of his sins. He didn't choose Jesus. He didn't. Um, so was he never saved before then? Not, not as far as we know. You know, I mean, of course, you could say the same about James or. Uh, That's what I was wondering. Was, it, it, was he just was he saved and then he made such bad decisions and backslid so bad? I believe that every group that Jesus spoke to, uh, including the disciples, clearly, um, some of them choose to follow it, many choose to follow, and, and some do not. You know, That's, 
That's but see, I mean, in that right there, you know, Jesus being God and all knowing, mm -hmm. the question, to me, the question that comes up then is why would he choose him? Mm -hmm. And the only thing I can come up with is it was part of his plan that this had to take place. Mm -hmm. It was prophetic, so right. to speak. No, it is. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, that's the way I look at that. Well, I always say you can't really say. I mean, it doesn't, I don't. You can't really yeah. say. You can't really yeah, say where you end up. You can't say where you Yeah, it's not something. definitive. For yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah, so, no. All right, here we go. Very good. Uh, verse 31. <clears throat> when he, Judas, when he had gone out, Jesus said, now, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him, him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Um, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So, um, you know, one one thing, you know, we, we've already talked about uh, quite a bit, but we, for, for anybody who wasn't here last week, we are in the upper room. Uh, we have just got finished with the Last Supper, um, and um, we're, we're in the upper room. The upper room is a rich home. It's out in, in Mount Zion, right outside the old city walls. We have, uh, for your viewing pleasure, I'll probably stand in front of it for most people, but Mark Ford has provided a map for us this week. That way nobody can make fun of me. i got to put some labels on here. But <laughs> in relation to the temple and the temple mount, we are all the way over on, on this other, you know, these are kind of two mountains here to some degree. And over here on the, in the old city, the city of David, is where the upper room is. Um, it's, it's quite a bit. It's all, all the way on the other side of Jerusalem to some degree. Um, but we talked about how it would be a rich family. We talked about how the real estate there would be a very, uh, you know, uh, expensive place to buy something. Um, you can't get any fancier than, than a Mark Ford map, though. But um, so uh, this is the site of the Last Supper. Uh, not the, the Lord's Supper takes place there, the Eucharist, the, uh, you know, uh, this is my body, this is my blood. But that is not what we're talking about. John does not include that. Um, for me, to some degree, John goes out of his way not to include that in some ways. I, I don't know why, but that's a whole other discussion. But um, he, uh, this is the last food that Jesus eats. This is the last supper with his disciples. Um, and, and like we just talked about, Satan is working here. Um, the, the 12 disciples are in the room. Jesus is in the room. Satan's in the room. Um, I, I think that's important to know. Satan ends up in the heart of Judas Iscariot. Um, and then verse 31 starts with Judas leaving the upper room. Uh, Jesus said to him, what you're going to do, do quickly. John's the only disciple who knows that, Jesus, uh, that Judas is the betrayer at this point. I think that's important. Up until this point, nobody knew. Um, he, he says, uh, the one who I give this to, he's talking to John, the one who I give the, you know, the morsel of bread and the sop to, he, he's the one. And then he does it. The rest, doesn't under, the rest don't understand what he's, uh, what he's meaning when he says that. Uh, in what you're going to do, do quickly. All the disciples heard Jesus say, uh, what you're going to do, do quickly, but nobody understood at the, at the table why he said that. Some thought that because Jesus, Judas had the money bag, Jesus was sending him out for uh, needs for the feast uh, or for, to give to the poor. Um, it was a very common thing on the Passover. It's very similar to our Christmas. We'll have a Christmas event, and we will go out and try to help people who are less fortunate, who don't have very similar. At the Passover, um, the outlying uh, parts of the city, they would go out and give their, the, you know, especially leftover food <coughs> to the poor trying to help. Um, so that would have been, I think, of course, he wasn't carrying any food out when he left, but still. Um, for me, one of the things that I really liked that I looked up was, you know, uh, it says, you know, they thought he might be going out to, um, you know, um, make some, you know, make some purchases or whatever. And then my first thing, thought is like, well, how can you make purchases on the Passover? I mean, they got like 10,000 rules for everything. Well, they actually have specific rules for that. And uh, it's, it's like you can make um, transactions on the Passover, but you can't exchange money. So it has to be goods for, and I'm like, man, what kind of, I mean, those people have rules for everything. So anyway, um, that doesn't, uh, but remember, and, and we talked about Judas and his importance in the group 
He has the money bag. He's the treasurer of uh, the band of disciples. Um, and he was the one who said, why is this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Um, and he said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put in. So before he even hardened himself to betray Jesus, he was already guilty of embezzlement. He was already a thief. Um, I know we want to feel sorry for him, but uh, he takes the money bag and he leaves in the night, you know, uh, never to return. Um, you may say, uh, well, you know, we're going to talk about that. Uh, oh, there, there's one thing there that is, that is implied. We know that the group gave money to the poor. Um, when Judas says, uh, or they think he may go out and give money to the poor, clearly that would have been something that he would, he's done before. Uh, but Jesus loved Judas to the end. Jesus, the host, sits Judas in the seat of honor, and he starts the Passover Seder by dipping the morsel into the sop and offers it to him. He takes this piece of, uh, of, of matzah, um, which is an unleavened bread, and um, you would take it and you would dip it into this. For me, it's kind of like a paste or a mortar. I like to think of it as like wasabi, because it's similar to wasabi to some degree. Um, if you're not familiar with wasabi, um, if you're not, come on now. Huh? Did you have some while you were open? No, not any, not any wasabi. No, no. The, this this is called the bitter herbs. Is what the name of this part of the seder is. Is when you dip um, the matzah in the bitter herbs and you taste it, and, and like there's this super bitterness to it. It would be a, a, a bad taste. Did we have that? I don't. I don't know. Um, it would be uh, the point of it in the meal. There's a point of each part of the meal, um, and it would be to. To indicate that the overemphasis on material things results in bitterness. That's that's what you're supposed to get out of it. Uh, the bitter herbs, it's part of the Seder. And there's this order to the Seder, which if you understand as you read through the Gospels and you read the Last Supper, it, it makes so much more sense, you know. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole thing right now, but it starts with this Kadesh. The Kadesh is the blessing of the wine. And then there's this washing, this preparation time. And at that point, that would have been when Jesus washed their feet. Um, the carpus, the yata, they they divide everything. Uh, I don't want to go through. They, they tell the story. They have the people, the young kids, ask the questions. Um, they eat the matzah. That's that's where we're at there. The food, first food eaten at the meal is the matzah, the unleavened bread. That would have been um, the scene in which that happened right there, um, with the bitter herbs. <laughs> Um, so there's 14 steps, though, in, in the Seder. Maybe we can, we can go through them a little bit better as we keep going. But, but Jesus offers this matzah to Judas, and he, he offers the sop, uh, is the, uh, the KJV. And John says, um, after, they'd taken the, after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, what you're going to do, do quickly. Um, my first question there is, did, Jesus, I mean, did Judas eat it? Um, I, I, like, I like to think of that, you know? And he, it says that he took it. Um, he, it says, so after receiving the morsel, I don't know, did he eat it? I don't know. Did he just get up? It says he immediately got up and straight away went out, you know? I don't know. Because he was humiliated. Yeah, maybe he just took it and threw it. Yeah. You know, who knows, you know? I don't know. Because um, he was exposed, because at that point, the other disciples had no idea what he said. When, when Jesus leans into it, Judas knows what Jesus is saying. He knows exactly what he's telling him to go yeah. to. Yeah. He's not... Right. Go do what? No, he gets up right yeah, then and he yeah. leaves. He knows um, you know, what's going on. The other disciples don't, but, but Judas does. Um, so after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. And, and we kind of said that last week, where it was night. Night, uh, of course, means, you know, it, it was night as far as a natural meaning, but also in a symbolic way. Um, Judas leaving Jesus was going into the spiritual darkness to betray him. And, and all the references in, in, to night and John all have symbolic, uh, you know, you got um, Nicodemus comes to him by night. Um, uh, we must work with the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. Night symbolizes the spiritual darkness all throughout John. Um, if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Um, so many times, uh, it, that's, that's what it means when it says night. Uh, Judas went out and it was night. He was swallowed up by the darkness. Um, I like to think of this as, as Judas gets up, Jesus gets up with him, he walks with him, he escorts him to the door, he closes the door, and then as he turns around, he says, now is the Son of Man glorified. Like, he starts it right then. Um, 
you know, I, he, he's in the uh, he's in the amen, amen, truly, truly, I say to you uh, mode here. Um, but he uh, he closes the door as he goes out. He turns around. And he starts preaching uh, 31 and 32 there now. And then he's marking this, this point of time right here. Um, God is the source of the glory. I think I think that that one sentence right there is kind of it kind of doubles itself a little bit. But if there's one thing to know about it, it's that God is the source of the glory. Did the disciples realize what was going on then? I, I think John does. Okay. I don't think anybody else does. Um, I sure know Simon Peter doesn't. He doesn't know anything that's going on. Um, but I, I don't think the rest of them understood it all. They all just thought that he was going out. None of them suspected him of, it, of anything. I just didn't know when when Jesus turned around and he started mm -hmm. preaching. I wonder if he said, once he said that, they said, ooh. I still don't think so. They didn't. I don't know. And, and you know, 100%, there is dialogue being said that is not in this. You know, 100%. You know, um, in, in the first century, when you're writing down uh, an event, word for word is not even what you're trying to do. You know, you're, you're, that would not have been the focus. So, to leave out this or to leave out that would have not been. We, we like everything to be uh, video uh, transcripts, you know, and like, no, I want to know word for word exactly what they said, you know, but unfortunately it's not like that. But I think they wouldn't have thought twice about it because you said that they, it's common for them to go out. That's right. Mm -hmm. He, he would have thought things. he's going out to yeah, take care of the things that they had discussed earlier is what they're all thinking. Um, so, um, oh, we're talking about glorify me in your presence uh, with the glory that you had before the world existed. Yeah. Glorify him at once. Um, so here's where Jesus uh, calls the disciples little children. And for me, I, I maybe I'm reading into that one too much, you know, but I love the idea. Uh, he, he means it in a spiritual way. I'm, I'm not saying he doesn't, you know, but I love the idea that they're all very young. You know, we just assume based on these Renaissance paintings that we've seen um, that they all have beards and they're all Jesus' age and maybe even some of them are even older than that, you know. But, like, I love the idea that they're all still teenagers or, or young 20-year-olds. And, um, and that's, why they ask, that's why they ask these questions so straight. You know, that's why Thomas doesn't know. That's why Simon Peter doesn't know, you know. Um, so that's just my own thing. He means it in a loving, spiritual way uh, would be the, you know, the correct way to look at it. But stop calling them little children. You know, just throwing that out there. But uh, he, he has... Um, this is the beginning of, of this whole speech that he is going to give to them over the next few chapters. And he is he's just talking just specifically to them. And, uh, and as he's talking to them, he's also talking to us. And I love that. Um, but uh, he says, I have a new commandment for you. And, and right there, that's kind of in contrast to the old commandment. Um, Jesus summarizes the whole law, and he gives this moral code for Christianity. Um, if there's any way... To, to mark yourself as a Christian. There, if there's any way to be identified as a Christian, some people would tell you that it's, it's your fruits, um, which is not, that's not you know, wrong, but um, this is it. This is it, to love one another as Jesus loves you. Um, Jesus just gave this foot washing and this symbol of how we're supposed to interact. Um, now he gives them, the disciples a commandment of love one another. And Jesus says, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another, by this love uh, you have and, and show for one another, by this you will show that you are my disciple. In this way, the world will know. Um, that's, that's, that's pretty big. Um, all of the early church fathers would have said this is one of the focus points of, uh, of John's gospel, this, this line right here. Um, and, and, I mean, we, we still say it. We, we use it, you know, but, like, it is not... It's not, if you were to type in um, the 10 most important verses in John, it may not be in there, which is very strange. You know, it's, it's I mean, he is saying this as if this is something to, to mark, you know. Uh, this is highlight or worthy. Um, but he tells his disciples um, that this is how they're measured. This is the proof you are being a disciple. Um, in 1431, we haven't got there yet, but, but I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know that I love the Father. Uh, so we do as Jesus has commanded us, so that the world may know that we love Jesus, is a, is a more direct way of looking at that one. Um, hatred of one another um, is, an, is an argument that we are not um, disciples of Jesus. I think, I think that's pretty clear. Um, so 
little children, yet a little while, I, uh, a little while longer, I'm with you. Where I'm going, you cannot come. Um, that confuses them. And of course, at that point, we've got the, the chief, most confused uh, disciple, uh, Simon Peter, going to step up here. So we'll pick up there in 36, and we'll read these next three verses, um, which closes this chapter. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow until you, until you have denied me three times. So, Simon Peter, being Simon Peter, he's confused. And he is, uh, he's confused on where Jesus is going, you know. Uh, it's very similar to the, the Pharisees for me uh, in chapter 7 and 8. Um, where does this guy intend to go that we can't go also, you know, kind of a thing? Uh, is he going out to the dispersion or speak to the Greeks or all those things? And then um, and then in 8 he says, he says to him again, I'm going away and you'll seek me and you'll die in your sin. Where I'm going, you cannot come. So he's, he's used this language before that he, where he's going, you cannot come. And um, you'd think that I already asked that question by then, but um, but Peter says, why can I not follow you now? Right now, this minute, why can I not just go with you? Um, is kind of what he's saying. Uh, he has this level of impatience, this level of uh, being a teenager for me, but uh, he does not understand the whole death scene that's about to occur for me. Uh, and, and I don't think any of them do, although he has said it over and over and over. Um, but like Thomas, he's not afraid of the danger. He's willing to go out and, and take the risk. You know, Thomas said, let us also go so we may die with him. Um, they both know, I think they know and accept that Jesus is this good shepherd. He will, you know, um, he will protect them, especially if they're loyal to him, you know. Um, loyalty being one of the marks of, of a good disciple, let's just say. Um, Peter says, I will lay down my life for you. Jesus comes right back, uses his own words. Will you lay down your life for me? I think that's that's a that's a strong back and forth right there. You know, I, I feel like he just shot him down. Um, we already talked about what he's done what he's done with him at the meal, just in where he has Simon sitting. Um, he's he's already shot him down to some degree. Here he is shooting him down even more. This is a, this is a tough evening. The whole night is very tough for Simon Peter. Uh, he, but he takes his words and he puts them right back at him. Then he says, "Amen, amen. I declare to you, speaking just to Simon Peter." The rooster will not crow until you've denied me three times. And then he prophesies about Peter's denials. Um, it's not, I think in our book it's, it says Peter's denial, but it's technically, I mean, there's three of them uh, separate. He says the rooster will not crow again tonight is the, is the context there. You, you will not hear a rooster crow again until this happens. Um, it's very it's very strong scene. This very night, there will be no roosters crowing until you've already done this. Man, it's... Uh, strong, you know, the sun's not going to come up, it's night, it's darkness, and you're going to deny me. Um, and Luke's account's almost exact. In 2234, he says, uh, Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny me three times that you know me. Um, and all the disciples are silenced. Uh, they sit uh, astounded and perplexed. I, I feel like they don't know what to say. You know, here, here's Simon Peter to some degree, he's the chief disciple. He's, he's, he doesn't understand. How can I understand, you know? Um, their hearts are troubled. If, if there's one thing to remember out of today's as we go into next week's, at this point, they're confused. Their hearts are troubled. They don't know what to think. Um, and how does Jesus address that? We're going to find out next week. That's good, right? Yeah, we, we'll pick up there in 14. Um, but I, I feel like, and, and next week, boy, we have some underlining and highlighting to do. As soon as we get into chapter 14, uh, it is it's highlighter city. So um, we'll find out next week exactly how he's going to un untrouble their hearts, let's just say. Um, so anybody got any, uh, any further questions or comments or angry outbursts? Was Jesus the only one that received the... Uh that morsel. Ooh, I think the meal continues. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because you just think after the you received continues. that morsel and this kind of saw what happened, mm -hmm. were the questions they have that they would kind of be leery of taking it also. Mm -hmm. No, 
I'm, I'm with you. No, I think the mill continues. SAP is going to come back. They keep going. And if it's what you said is that that is a bitter, a bitter type morsel, mm -hmm. that, that would be. It's like a horseradish or something. Even like a punishment. Yeah, kind of. I I think they they pass it around and then they they just keep eating everything. Um, the the reason why they keep eating, I know, is because um, in the other um, in the other gospels, especially Matthew, um, they there's there's a point in which. The, the drink comes out after the food, and that's a part. That's where you know, they're having the Lord's Supper. That's when they're having the Eucharist, you know. And so, he, as he's as each one of them's taking the bread, he had, he addresses that. Each each one's taking the the wine, he addresses that. So, uh, they do continue the meal. For sure. And then that and then that commandment uh, that you should have love for one another, I think as Christians, that's a very hard one. Ooh, that's a hard one for sure, for sure. Um, oh, let, let me just say this real quick to that first question. Uh, the, the next, the last thing in the in the uh, in the seder in the Passover meal is they sing the Hallel together, and at the end of this, they they sing together. So, I, I know that the meal continues, you know. But that's a good one. Um, it's very difficult, you know, uh, to love one another as Jesus loved us. Uh, here's a good one for you. Oh, we got like 12 minutes. When, when you hear that, when you think of an example in your life of someone. Who loved others as if they felt Jesus loved them? Anybody got any uh, any people, any examples in their life of someone who you felt loved like that? Hmm. Yeah, come on now. Scott's about to burst. Well, that's sad. We don't know anybody. No, no, a little, little kid. I thought, yeah, I could say that because I mean. But adults. It's few and far between, you think? Yeah. Mm. It is tough. I mean, well, that's what I say. I just think about I the things like that, that, you know, these guys walked with Jesus. They were with him day and night. Mm -hmm. They were seeing the things he did, but yet they still had reservations about whether this was truly God or not. Mm -hmm. You know, so. That would be tough, mm -hmm. especially you know somebody's fixing to betray, you know, but yet you still extend that love to them. Oh yeah. yeah. The Can I still go back to that, my question last week? I'm not satisfied with the answer you gave. Out of boy, Scott, come on with me. Go back because when, when the comment was made that somebody was going to betray him, you said at that time that all all the other disciples. Kind of had an idea who it was because I think I even asked like if we were if we were if if that was us we would know we would know who who it was. I, I, I don't know who it is, but it's Dorsey. Right. <laughs> I, I, think kind of like I think that was kind of like the comment made that they had an idea who it was, maybe not final. Just like talking amongst themselves. Yeah, that's like, what I say. Like they, they, like you said, yeah. like hey, it's Dorsey. You know, right, right. Kind of thing. It's like, uh, they kind of they kind of had a right. right. Yeah, maybe. Um, well, you know, that's the reason I struggle was he saved because he was with Jesus all the time and he was listening to him preach and and, and thousands of people were being saved everywhere and I'm just blown away that he was never saved and he mm -hmm. and he walked with him every day. Yeah. I, I feel like in our uh, in our society we, we like to look at people innocent to their proven guilty to some degree, you know. <laughs> Although he is kind of proven guilty here. Um I I feel like in the in the first century context, uh, he he makes his own choices, and, and that was not in his choices. You know, he is uh, he's going down this. Uh, Jesus says, "Follow me," and he's over here. That's that's kind of the way I, I see their understanding of it. Well, it's had, not in the. We had this discussion before about where where's the line between the the old law, yes, and the new. Mm -hmm. Where is Jesus following? Say saved, could he ever be saved but kind of lose his salvation because he's still under the law? We hadn't got Jesus down. He is still under the law. So, so in the law, they can lose their salvation? I, I'm, I'm asking. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Or I, how, how do you, actually, under know. the law, how would you be saved anyway? Because you well, can't believe you in Jesus, so it's the law. You have a sacrifice for your sins, so if he is so not like you you you're your shed in blood, blood, animal blood, all the so, but for your forgiveness of sins. 
in your dedication to God. We had the same conversation about the thief on the cross. You know, you're not. You're mm -hmm. torn. Jesus had not died yet. Oh, so yeah. Where is he at? I think sometimes it's, it's much more important for us to worry about our own. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Than <laughs> Just throw that out there. That's um, a good way to get out of the answer. We'll figure it out one day. <laughs> yeah, hey, one day we'll know, you know. Um, good answer there, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Back to uh, <laughs> come on, man. What's he saying? Come, come on, man. man. Come on, man. Come on, man. man. No, um, you, you didn't say it right. Come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. Um, anyway, back to the love of Jesus. You know, one, one of my favorite one of my favorite scenes. We're talking about how how can you love like Jesus? You know, when he is on the cross, he says, "Pray for them. They know not what they do." As they are literally killing him. I mean, that is yeah. that is a. Uh, a love that we we probably have a hard time understanding. I don't think we do. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's a lot. I don't because I look at some people and wonder, how are you alive? Mm -hmm. We don't have it. We don't understand it because we don't. I sure don't have it. Right. It's uh, it's something to strive for, you know. Uh, from from afar, the only the only person coming to my mind from afar would be somebody like Jimmy Brown. Okay. That's good. But, again, we're from afar. I don't know. I went there eating breakfast with him one day. <laughs> No, that's good. Yeah, no, like an example, uh, I, my, my favorite example would be somebody who's not even who believe in Jesus, but like uh, Mahatma Gandhi, he spent his whole life for other people. You know, he gave everything that he had. He he did all these things um, out of love for for his fellow, you know, man. You know, now he didn't believe in Jesus or anything, so that's. <laughs> I mean, I'm just giving the act, I guess. Um, but you know, uh, you say Mother Teresa. Uh, although she's Catholic, and that doesn't really count either. But no, I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> but waste. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but like uh, people whose whole lives they they devoted to uh, to other people and, and serving others and helping others. I feel like those people are not um, made to be recognized here, and and they're we shouldn't know their name to some degree. If they're doing what they're supposed to be doing correctly, then we wouldn't know. You know, that's pretty good. I mean, I thought of those folks when you. When you asked that question, mm -hmm. but, but again, you know, like Gandhi, I mean, yeah, yeah, he didn't believe it, mm -hmm. you know. So, so you can show Christ-like character without believing in Christ. Uh, let's let's put it like yeah, let's put it like this. Like how is that possible? Okay. Sorry, uh, being as that we are um, made in the image of God, mm -hmm. uh, we can show and display the characteristics of God on occasion. So to do things for others, to be, uh, you know, to be gracious to others, to be uh, with loving kindness, uh, all those type of steadfast love, you, you can, exp you know, uh, express those things, you know. Um, it doesn't mean that you're perfect or any of those kind of things. Though. I guess sinners can do good. People that are unsafe can do good just like safe people can do bad. Mm -hmm. it, it is a belief in a group of, um, that there's a cult that I can think of, who believes that man can do nothing good, nothing good outside of God, you know? Um, but all you got to do is give a million dollars to this group, and, I mean, you just did something good. Not, not if your heart's... Uh, it's still, you're still doing something good. There can be good reactions out of it. Well, before I got saved, I mean, I was good to people. Now, some people I wouldn't, but... Mm -hmm. right. I you, like you to think I was nice. You can go cut the neighbor's yard <laughs> yeah. for free and get nothing out of it. Yeah. Even if you're just trying to make your own yard look good. Look how bad your yard looks. I want to fix my yard. You're still making a good act, you know, not really having God in mind. Just out. Now I just say, I wish they'd come to a stinking grass. Yeah. <laughs> Put a note in there. No yeah. I have a question. Okay. You just betrayed Jesus. Do we not, in a sense, kind of betray Jesus when we don't live right and make right decisions in a way? I think betrayal is a strong betray, word. Betray, yes, it's not the right word. Yeah. I, it's not, it's not, it is more like a deny, like Peter, but it's really not even deny, kind of, it's just kind of like we, we choose to put ourselves first at times. And I think that's what Judas is really, selfish. he is selfish, you know, he puts himself first in all of his choices instead of putting Jesus first. So I do, I do think we make our own choices in putting ourselves first. Um, yeah, it's just saying Betrayal, Are we doing him, the same? betrayal to me is a complete denial. It's, I don't believe you are who you say you are, and I don't 
trust you. I don't follow you. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's the betrayal to me. Um, but when you use God's name in vain, mm. is that betrayal? Well, I don't know if betrayal is the right word, but it is. I think it's sin. I don't think it's betrayal. But what's mm -hmm. a sin's a sin, isn't it? Sin is a sin. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, you know, uh, it is a sin. Um, but good question. I don't think. I mean, I think God puts a degree on sin. You know, like this sin's worse than this one. And I mean, to Him, it's all a three-letter word. It's a sin. Mm -hmm. It's against what we should do. Or how we should behave. I don't, I don't know. My idea of betrayal is much different. Than, mm -hmm. you know. yeah. I do think that we wrong Jesus when we make yeah. wrong choices. When we um, when we have on our Jesus shirt and we cut off somebody in traffic, or we um, take advantage of uh, situations, or you know whatever. We um, you know we have our uh, you know I love Jesus hat on. You know as we. Uh, filing our taxes incorrectly or we're um, taking from less fortunate to help ourselves or what, you know, those kinds of things. I mean, I do think that, you know, oh, disappoint is a good word. That's, yeah. that's brand better. Or maybe just like disappointment is too beside it. Just like a little bit more than that. But, you know, still. Um, to the second power. Anyway. Um, no, that's very good. Very good discussion there. Any other... Uh, Closing almost impossible questions for me to answer. <laughs> <laughs> so next week, um, we're in chapter 14. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, Jesus is going to continue his discourse um, through John here to his disciples, and we will be there with him as as we are, you know, sitting in their shoes to some degree, uh, sitting in their seats. I still wish it said mansions right there in chapter 14. What's it say? Rooms. Oh, there's mansions in my house or whatever? Yeah, I mean, there's many. It says here there's, there's a, my father's house of many rooms. Mm -hmm. Many mansions. Man, I'm looking for a mansion. Yeah, somebody got clean those mansions. Hey, hey. hey. <laughs> no, not here. I don't think there's any cleaning. It's so clean. Yeah, no, I think so too. I'm, I'm going to agree with that. I'm ready mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, I don't know. It's going to be hard to get one swankier than the one you got, you know? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> anyway, moving That's on. That's hers. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll, uh, so we have many things to pray for this week. Uh, we have so many people out. Crystal had her um, back surgery on Thursday. She's still recouping from that. Um, uh, this morning, um, Dina, uh, Rick had to take her to the ER. She's having excruciating pain, and she it won't quit, and so they're there. Um, we have many people out on uh, vacation and different things, um, the Tabs and the Hunters, and different folks. So the, uh, the, uh, the worship set this morning will be a little, it'll be kind of, be just a little lower than normal, you know? Maybe a little lower than that. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. Uh, all of our pianists are out, so... A lot of pressure for you to kick it up a notch. Uh, it's a little, it's a little pressure. Yeah, you can turn it up even more. Yeah, we got Rick sex this morning. He was like, I'm not impressed at piano at all. Yeah, I told the choir this morning. I told the choir this morning. I kind of got what I deserve out of it. I think you know, I like to last second spring brand new songs on in very difficult keys, and then this week I'm gonna have to play them. So it's pretty good. I just I take advantage of the fact that Rick and Crystal are so uh, musically gifted that they can just. You know, Pick things up. Plus, Crystal practices like 25 hours a day or something, so uh, that makes it easier. <laughs> but uh, not today, so we'll see how this goes. Um, what you yeah, no, that's exactly right. So if at any point you see me up there laughing, I've missed either the line or the words or something. We'll we'll see. Uh, He's sitting back there with my support card today. Yeah, <laughs> nervous <laughs> laughter. Insert nervous laughter. And that's right. You give so yourself you away when you do it, but most of us can't even tell you missed something, but you give it away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Missed that one. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. He always looks at me because he knows I'm yeah. lying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I saw I heard that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, it'll, it won't be hard to mess them today because there's no other noise. And so we'll see. All right. So we'll uh, we'll pray for all those things. Uh, pray for our uh, 
for our class. We, uh, we had a good outing there Friday night, I thought. We had 25 or more uh, go to the baseball game. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't enough to help the, uh, to overcome the uh, hot rods. The hot but anyway, rods. Uh, better luck next time. <laughs> so, all right, we'll, uh, we'll have a quick prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for bringing us in here this morning. We ask that you bless our time together as we go out and, and, uh, and have our worship service. Um, watch over our, our guest speaker this morning and use him uh, to speak through him to us and continue to help us to apply these, these truths to our lives um, and, and have our service be used for your glory. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Oh, yeah, I'll get it. Yeah. I'll just put it over here. Oh.